everybody can hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Yeah, I don't understand why my camera's working here on my computer, but uh, I'm kind of used to this. When I had my show on 12160, I just did it microphone so nobody could see me. Okay. okay. All right, everybody, because I don't really know how to figure it out now, and I don't want to change my subject. Okay, okay. Well, what, what computer do you have? You have Windows 7? No, I, I think it's a window, it's either Windows 7 or XP, but either I had the thing working just earlier. I could see myself clearly, but I'm seeing just black screen now. Oh. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, 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 Robin. Yeah, so, uh, Brian, I, last week he came up to me and he says he had all kinds of dangerous information to tell us, and we'd like to know more about it, uh, what the information is, if it's about between Bill Cooper, Alex Jones, and JFK. Yes, um, the reason that I'm coming forward with this is because recently uh, groups of people on Facebook were concerned because they noticed that Mark Dice was making a concerted effort to badmouth William Cooper and all of his research. Now, I went and watched his uh, pitiful little half-hour video, and of course he goes back to Bill's uh, Behold a Pearl Horse. And if anybody has followed Cooper well enough, they'll know that that was kind of early in his career when he's coming out. And immediately after that, he begins admitting to his mistakes and the things that he might have misjudged because he's more aware now that he's exposing more of the uh, underworld of the Jesuits, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and the things like this, and that it has more to do with the government. And uh, they put together a group, but me, it was particularly last Sunday morning, July 15th, when I woke up, that... Um, I've told you guys before I believe in Jah Jehovah and Jesus Christ and uh, I've, I've been following him since 2006 when I was woken up and especially since 2009 when I dedicated my life to them. And since then uh, I get downloaded information quite often that uh, I verify through various sources that it's, it's good information because it builds our minds and I'm not supposed to know this stuff. And uh, last Sunday morning I was woken up kind of like with all the pieces connecting together of why Alex Alex Jones and Mark Dice are making such an effort to badmouth William Cooper. Uh, anybody who follows Cooper's research knows that he's also very good at exposing people because he was with intelligence for over 35 years. So he knows how it operates, both sides of it. And that was a favor to the rest of us to have somebody like that come onto our side. He was very good at uh, spotting a lot of people. This started for me in July of 2009 on May 3rd. Um, Horowitz, Dr. Horowitz had just been on the show a few days earlier and talked about the swine flu. And that same day I went and followed all of Dr. Horowitz's research and I found lots of the documentation. So I'm listening to Alex Jones the next day because I've been listening to Alex Jones since 2006. I was one of the Jones followers and everything. But starting in the spring of 2008, my father and Jesus are starting to wake me up to the fact that Jones is not who he appears to be and that he's actually uh, one of these false opposition coagitators. On Tal Pro. Sorry? On Tal Pro. Yeah, and um, I'll be honest with you because I'm like anybody else. I like the guy. I feel like he's shown me a few things and taught me a few things. I'm defending him and stuff. And it, it's hurting my head, it's hurting my heart, it's stressing me out like it should. But, you know, at the end of the day, after you face it for a couple of months and the stuff keeps getting presented to you, you're in this for you, you're not in this for anybody else. And you have to face it at the end of the day, the stuff that comes in front of you, you can't run away from it. Now, on this particular day, Jones is coming on and he's bragging, but instead of talking about the, the flu and the fact that the government and the, the pharmaceutical companies have done it, Today he's coming and he's talking on about finances and gold, and it just blows my mind. And I had already been contacting him a lot about chemtrails, and he'd even laughed me off the show once when I told him that my children had been showing me from the sky, you know. And I'm like, how come you guys not covering this? And this particular day, somebody sends me the newspaper clipping from William Cooper's newspaper, Veritas, from 1999 with an article, what are those strange lines in the sky? So I'm counting 1999 to 2009, 10 years, and you haven't said a thing about chemtrails. And he's sitting there, and he's saying that he's interested, he's getting a lot of slack from his fans because he knows that the chemtrail thing is an issue, and he's just finished the Obama deception. He's very proud of his work. 
and he wants to start making a documentary on chemtrails. But first, first, he'd like to finish a documentary that he's been working on on JFK. And this, this really stops me in my tracks because um, I know that William Cooper has already exposed that it was the driver. He took the film to Japan and he proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And now I have second confirmation from an article over at Jesuit Assassins where it stated that Greer told Jackie in the hospital, a doctor witnessed and listened, heard him say this, that he had to do it. He didn't have a choice. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I've seen the gun from the 1976 CIA hearings. It's a gun, I believe it's made of wood that they put together, and the bullet is made from the same blowfish that they make the uh, Haitian zombies with. So if the bullet doesn't kill you, you'll still never wake up. And um, after seeing all these things, I'm like, let's say for the sake of argument that somebody else did do JFK. We're sitting here in 2009, we've got a swine flu, we've got codex coming on us. We've got all kinds of things. What is it going to change? Because to me, killing him, the reason that they killed him was to take the heart out of the American people, to just lose all faith in the system and give up. And that's what that, the children of that generation were shown, which is why they raised up in the late 60s, early 70s, because they were upset that their parents had seen something so blatant in front of them, and they didn't do anything. They just kind of melted away and did nothing and accepted it. So I knew the purpose, but in the end I'm saying, what does it do for us today? Why are these people still following this? And so I never really wanted to go after Cooper. I never wanted to go after Jones or Dice back then in 2009, because if you go through Will Cooper's stuff, he speaks for himself. He defends himself. I'm sorry, there's really nothing else to do. Are you pretty pitiful if you can try taking a run at the man? I would have issues with him now on certain questions and understandings that I have, and still it wouldn't be to take the man down or anything like that. But I've seen some people attempts at trying to take down Cooper, and they're really simple because, like I said, his research, his accuracy, the things he's done, they speak to himself. So I'm not asking, well, why JFK? So here I'll start enlightening some people on some information. Joseph Smith was a 33rd degree Freemason, and he decided to start his own religion called the Mormons. And he took some of the secrets from Freemasonry and exposed them out into the open. And for this, the Freemasons needed to kill him. But the Freemasons could not get their own hands dirty themselves. So they instigated a mob to go and kill Joseph Smith. But Joseph Smith knew it was the Freemasons that instigated the mob, and he screamed as he died, the Freemasons are doing this. Uh, Lincoln... Abraham Lincoln, with all the theories and all the similarities between him and JFK, there is another similarity. That would be that Lincoln went to court with the Jesuits and won, and he turned to his lawyer that day and said, from this day on, I'm a marked man, and if I'm ever killed, you can be sure it's the Jesuits that are going to do it. Well, I'm sure that a lot of the listeners out there are aware that JFK was a Roman Catholic. He was one of the first Roman Catholics that was uh, elected as president. He was also an order of the Knight of Columbus of the fourth degree. How many degrees are they? This is documented. Okay. Uh, we also know the, the number that he was at, just like we have a council here in Bill St. Pierre where I live that has a number on its building, and the number on his building, everybody knows what it is. And so being a Knight of Columbus, you have to read the oath. And when you read the oath of the Knights of Columbus, it states in their oath that if they're not, they're obliged, like all of the other Knights of Malta, um, Opus Dei, all of these different Roman Catholic offsprings, they're all meant to bring the order back to the Roman Catholic Church. Even the Jesuits themselves were founded as a counter-reformation to the Reformation, and they were supposed to, they were sold to us, the public, that, oh, we're going to watch the Catholic Church. But secretly in their oath, their oath is to bring back all power under the Roman Catholic Church, and this by any means necessary. So these Knights of Columbus, they're obliged to do the same thing and to fight um, Protestants in any way, shape, or form, or any other form of person. And they say in their oath that if they don't live up to their obligation to the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuits, the Pope's militia, the Pope's army, 
have the right to cut off their hands and legs and stuff, sulfur in their stomach and everything. So it's basically, you're swearing that if you don't fulfill your obligation to the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuits have the right to come and kill you. So if you look on my Facebook, Robert and Mario, and anybody else listening, you'll see that in the last day I've posted a couple of instances where JFK, as a Knight of Columbus, broke his oath. Now, when he was still a senator or a governor and he was trying to become president, they asked him if his Roman Catholic would get in the way of his decision-making. And he might have been playing the game then, playing a good to the people who was really, really loyal to the Roman Catholics. He said that no, he didn't believe that even the Roman Catholic Church should sway an American president's decision. And he basically said this to become president. And you don't become anything in the United States or Canada unless the Knights of Columbus accept you. You don't, you're not worthy for presidency or dog pound unless the Knights of Columbus accept you. And so they accepted him saying this because he stepped up to president. But then he turned against them again a while later when he came out with the Secret Society speech in 1961. Whether we knew it or not, the Jesuits formed the Freemasons. The Jesuits oversee almost all of the secret societies, the Ku Klux Klan, the Illuminati, uh, you name it. The Jesuits are the overseers of all of this. You understand? And so what happened with the Knights of Columbus is he broke his oath, and then a second time he spills the beans on the secret societies. And I've seen Mark Dice on the History Channel thing about um, conspiracy theories, and he allowed himself to be put down and the women afterwards were saying, it's such rubbish that he talks about that. Everybody knows that Kennedy was talking about the communists. That's the most insane thing. Like, you've got to be really fluoridated and fog walking to believe this, okay? He says that plain as day, we are opposed to secrets, to secret societies, to secret agreements, to pledges. So it's very plain. There's a second time he breaks the oath. And the third time he breaks the oath, he's going against going into Vietnam. And he's getting in little George Bush, who just started in the CIA and named a boat after his wife, and he's going off to do the Bay of Pigs thing. He's getting in the way of all of this. So they have to get rid of him. So they got rid of him. And William Cooper, he, he had taken the original Zapruder film, and he brought it to Japan, and he proved that it was Greer that shot Kennedy in the head. And I've seen it enough times. So when it comes to Alice Jones, and he starts talking about William Cooper, well, you can't even trust him because you can still go back to the 1998 interview with William Cooper and listen to the whole interview. And Alex says, well, yeah, I brought you on because I heard you were having problems with some taxes and stuff. And then he proceeds to see, well, how do you see this playing out, Bill? How do you see it going down? And Bill says, well, if the revolution has to start with me running for my gun at the door, and that's how it's going to happen. Funny, that's exactly how he died. He shot in the back running for his gun at the door. But um, Jones seems to forget this in his rant recently when he says William Cooper is coming back for me from the grave. He forgets the entire interview. He says that he was disrespectful and he had to kick him off the show. So when you realize that this man can't even remember his own interview and is not even cognizantly aware that we can go out and listen to the interview and hear what a liar he is, and then Dice, a few years ago, he wrote a blog about William Cooper's an insane, drunk, retired liar. And now he's come out with the video and he uses his old material and things that William admitted to being wrong or lost about. But at the same time, I see John, that Dice, he's on the show with Jason Burmers talking about the Federal Reserve and taxes. Well, gee, isn't that funny? That's exactly why Alex Jones said, I'm having you on the show. I heard you're having some problem with the tax man. And William went on to say yes, because they can't show me a law that says that I'm supposed to pay taxes here. And I know that the Federal Reserve is not the federal government, so I'm not paying my taxes. So Dice is running with the same thing from the guy he's bad-mouthing. And then somebody shouted, well, when you go, okay, well, that was something else in 1996. William Cooper had his show on the Grove and pretty well exposed a lot of stuff there. But when you look at Dice and you look at Alex Jones who ran in for being and Grove to supposedly expose it, he never turned the camera to the statue that's there of the Jesuit founder of Bohemian and Grove. No, he never talked to you about that. You understand? Yeah. So 
Johnny was just there to sell gold. He's there to sell the Eastern Star Round Power, David ID, things like this. But you see, these people are commissioned. Everybody is commissioned. Uh, Ignatius Loyola was commissioned to, to found the Jesuit order, the Knights of Jesus, the Pope's militia. Adam Weishaupt, as a Jesuit, was commissioned to go and found the Illuminati, which is why I don't call it that name out anymore. I call them the Jesuiti. Because in 1774, they had to suspend the Jesuits because they had been kicked out of over 83 countries. And two years later, they commissioned a Jesuit to found a new order to just keep going, called the Illuminati. So we might as well call them the Jesuiti. And he was also commissioned at the same time to infiltrate Freemasonry, which was only up to a couple of degrees back then. It was a continuation of the Templars. And this finished off up to the level 33, and they overtook it so that they could milk the 85% of common man and use them. And though this is Alex Jones, if you try and think and think to yourself, what purpose does it serve us going and revisiting JFK's assassination now? We know it's the Jesuits that did it because he broke his oath as a Knight of Columbus and as a Roman Catholic, and therefore he gave the Jesuits the right. And as usual, like with Abraham Lincoln, with anything else the Jesuits do, They'll throw the window at you to believe. If you want to believe it's the mafia, sure. Go ahead, believe it's the mafia. If you want to believe that it was because of Cuba, you go ahead, you believe it was Fidel Castro. If you want to believe that it was the idiot that they shot dead, um, you can believe that. Yeah, he did it from the window. Believe what you want. They don't care as long as you never point at them. And this is proven because the Jesuits won anything else. So you notice that Alex, he will point at some other, he can point at Freemasonry. He could even point at the Knights of Columbus if he wants to. You can point at anything you want. Just do not point at the Jesuits. You understand? And we all know that Alex Jones attended a Jesuit college the in his hometown. The other right? funding him, right? Yeah. And his, his grandfather was a Freemason. His father was a Freemason. Because I've got the picture of his, of his grandfather's headstone. So people are... They're well aware of this, and so I'm just bringing this out because this is the whole reason when you hear Alex Jones badmouthing William Cooper, and when you hear Mark Dice trying to badmouth William Cooper, they they have been commissioned to do this to keep us all lost and off the main the main detractors just long enough. You understand? Just a little bit longer because they're trying to get our guns away from us now. That's why all the gun things are popping off everywhere. All of these NSA ultra stage things. So, and at the same time, the United Nations is meeting about guns. The mayor in Toronto is meeting about guns. Bloomberg is asking for the cops to stop doing their work until the guns are taken away. This is all very coordinated, convenient, because this is the last stage of it. Take away the guns, and then we can get to the last inquisition. The Jesuits can take over, and we can start slaughtering people wholesale. There'll be no opposition. They did it in Germany. They did it in Russia. And now we've gone global. Wow. You understand? And that's what I've brought to the table. Ryan, what do you think about the Zionist theories? The Zionists uh, only exist, began existence a hundred years ago. The Jesuits started a lot longer than that. You know, all, all these things that spewed from it, communism, fascism, these are all things to keep us all distracted. I mean, let's face it. Real Jews, real children of Judah, and real children of Israel have been slaughtered and scattered. And there's one race sitting there calling them Khazars that are not Jewish at all. They just took the religion to avoid the fight between the Christians and the Muslims. They don't have an ounce of Jew in them. They wouldn't know what a real Jew meant if it smacked them in the face. Because all you have to do to know a real Jew is to read the Bible, and bump into a few of them today, and you know who the real Jews are. Okay, people who walk around saying, you're all goyim and you should all be slaughtered. No, no, these were the people that fell in the crack when they tried to, to disrespect Moses and Jehovah at the base of the mountain. You understand? Korah and his gang, and you swallowed them up. These are the children of the serpent. So the Rothschilds are the Zionists. Yeah, but they're, they're puppets irregardless. They're the bankers for the Roman Catholic Church, you understand? I mean, we've been taught that, that if you have the power, you don't even need the money. Okay, well that means that the rock 
avatar of the money, they're not the power, the power is above them. You understand? Because all of these people run back to Lucifer, they all run back to the eye, the all-seeing eye, but they'll, they'll call them all the other appellations, uh, bringer of knowledge, bringer of light, bringer of the flame. You know, the fallen angel, the one who brought the flame to the earth of knowledge. Yeah, 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 you can tell it to me any way you want. Niagara Buddha, uh, Allah, you name it. I'm not impressed because I've researched them all. Uh, Allah, you name it. I'm not impressed because I've researched them all. So that's why when, when Jesus said, what's your name? He said, call us legion, we are many. There's a lot of names for this crown and his people. And, you know, the children that were born from the Nephilim that came down when they were destroyed in the flood, they were, they were half men, half spirit. So the material perished. But the spirit never per perished. These things have been running around since then, influencing people. Men like this who allow themselves to debase themselves, degrade themselves, feel like they have the right to this, they have the right to that. So they leave the back of their minds open and these things come in and just fulfill prophecy, exactly as it's written. And that they are the only ones that are fooled because they believe they're doing something new or fresh. No, it's the same old thing over and over again, and so we know they're going to fail. But in the meantime, you know, our purpose is to try and stop as many people from falling for their lives as possible. Let them go down by themselves. You know, the, the second point that I wanted to bring up tonight, because somebody had asked me on Facebook, uh, Knights of Columbus, what do they mean? Like, as if they're nothing, you know? How many people read the Knights of Columbus? The Knights of Columbus, what about them? How many diseases do they have? I believe they have four. They were founded by a, a Jesuit in Connecticut who came up to Montreal here and studied at St. Mary's and then went back and founded the Knights of Columbus. And uh, their purpose, like I said, is to, to bring everything back under, under the Pope. Now, the Knights of Malta, their purpose is to bring everything back under the Pope. The Jesuit order, the Knights of Christ, are supposed to bring everything back under the order of the Pope. Opus Dei is under obligation to bring everything back under the order of the Pope. But who is the Pope following? The Pope is following Lucifer, the all-seeing eye, the fallen one. Okay, and now if you go over to the secret societies, so let's say all these ones that I just named under the Catholic, they're the order, they're all orders. The order of Malta, the order of the Knights of Columbus, the order of Opus Dei. But now, these other ones, Freemasonry, these are the chaos. The yeah, yeah. Ones to bring the... Yes, Maria. What about the Rosicrucians? Where do they fall into? Oh, they're on the Roman Catholic side too. That's why the, the Georgia Guide songs, the signature, the name, it's meant to imply the Rosicrucians, and they, it's all the same purpose, because if you take the book Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and you read that, even though they're Freemasons and they're trying to distort history, they'll do us the favor of doing a lot of research, and if you read it properly three or four times, it actually exposes them to, but it exposes how far back this goes into France and, and the three of the Zion and everything, and the Rosicrucians, were, and were the ones that I believe they crushed the Cathars, there were plenty of uh, races that were crushed out there. But, you know, when you read about them, you realize that, well, some of them had to be crushed because just like a lot of these secret societies, they wanted to mix the Bibles with what they wanted, what sounded good to them. Everything was a good mix. The reason that they, the re, but the reason that they would upset the, the Roman Catholic Church at the time was because of the, all the Christian stuff that they did follow, they outshone the Roman Catholic Church. They could show people what true Christianity was, and that always brought the thread up that somebody would get the right path and go the right way, you know? And they had to eliminate that stuff. What about the Vatican assassins from Je Je Jesuits called Jitter? What does that mean? Can you repeat that? Sorry, Robert? What about the Vatican assassins and the Jesuits? Well, that's just it. They're, they're like the worst. They're, they're the original children of the serpent, you know, and if all you have to do is read their oath, what they swear an oath to, and what they say that they'll do, and when you truly, truly contemplate what it means to say, by any means necessary, how sick and twisted that can get, you realize that these 
And you see, they overtook the Freemasons, and they have the Freemasons bragging, saying, we're the original builders. Okay, well, who was the first person to build a city? Cain. He built a city for his son. So Cain was the original builder. So they're the sons of the original builder. Now, Cain, Cain was an Adam's son. Cain was the son of the serpent. The serpent got in there first. You understand? So they admit, when they turn to you and they say to you, we're the... We're the original builders, okay, you're the sons of the serpent, you're the sons of Cain, you're the sons of Satan, and you prove it by what you do. You've proven it by what you've done all throughout your history. You're not any different than any of the Muslim or Islam or the Buddhists, or just look back and at the big, long line of dead people that were given promises and then crushed and disappointed. But they were given fairy tales and they were led by the nose and the ears and pickled and giving drugs and enjoyment and women and whatever it took to lead them to their death and disappointment. And that's all I see when I look back at them. I was so the, the point I was bringing up about this is because when, when it comes to politics, they're always preaching this separation of church and state. And they're telling us that we're supposed to keep church and state separate. Well, if you did the first intelligent thing, which would be to go back and look through history, you realize that that's impossible. There has never been a separation of church and state in any culture or society because they would all intertwine their religion and their beliefs into what they were trying to do as far as governing the people. That never changed. But when you look at these people, like right here in Canada, or in the States, where it's been exposed that many of the politicians are Freemasons. So they make a pledge to this religion of Freemasonry first, that they're going to do everything in their power for them. Then afterwards, they present themselves to public office, and they make a second pledge to us. But you can't serve two masters. You know I mean? They serve first. They're the only ones that advance. We keep going down. So they're only obviously serving the Freemasons. And now, here in Canada, we, it's, it's mostly the Knights of Columbus. You don't get into office from mayor to prime minister unless the Knights of Columbus accept you. And when you realize that as the Knight of Columbus, they swear to bring everything back under... It's like in the old days, right? You used to register your baby with your religion and you register with the Catholic Church. And now that's why people are going away from religion because they want to find the right religion first before they were putting their child into it. Understand? And so then to get around this, they make the politician the Catholic representative. You know, the false front, like he's not religious. So you register your baby with the government of Quebec, you register your child with the government of Canada. But since all of these people are serving the Roman Catholic Church and they're doing it first, you and Mary have been tricked into registering your child into this damn belief system in this religion. And then when they grow up and they say this system sucks, I don't like it, the adults are trying to tell them it's just always been the way it is. No, 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 we're, we're being screwed over again. And so that's why we shouldn't even participate in any of their politics. We shouldn't, like, why would you vote for anybody when you know that anybody presenting themselves, even if they're not um, a Knight of Columbus sworn in, the Knight of Columbus has to accept this person. This person's name is brought to them. And they say yes or no, and it gets written out in the vote. Because if they said no to this guy, they said yes to the other one. And that's who wins, the other one. This guy might be left, oh, I'm not sure how it happened. Feel how you want. In the end, they get their way, their representative. When you read their, their first degrees in Freemasonry, and when you first read the first degrees in just about any of the societies, they say, present yourself as a volunteer and just stick yourself in any corner. Become a secretary who takes notes. Help this person bring drinks. No, 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 no. It's all about getting yourself in there. And then sooner or later, one of them gets to the position of doorkeeper. Like, I'm the guy who hires. I'm the guy who lets people in here. Well, bang. From there, they've got control of the door. They start keeping the door close to everybody else and only letting theirs in. Whether it be Freemason, Knight of Columbus, Knight of Malta, all the Secret Service, FBI, CIA, they're all Knights of Malta. They're all sworn to the Jesuits and to the Roman Catholic Church. So when the Jesuits said, look, we got to take out Kennedy, they had to help in that. That's why the Secret Service had to back off at the back of the car. And people weren't allowed to investigate this and weren't allowed to investigate that. Because they have to, they're obliged to. They took their oath first. In this one? What, yeah, what about the protocols of the elders of Zion? Is that a fake or is it a real document? I believe that it was it was uh, fronted as a fake document because it 
it's, it's, I, I believe it's almost word for word what was on that horse when they got hit by the lightning that was running with Wise Hop's plans for the uh, One World Order for the Illuminati. It's basically the same thing. It was just that it was presented to the Russians as a Jewish because, you know, it's like we were saying about the Rothschilds. I've been asked so many times about the Jews. Well, even these state Jews, they're just given the money so you can get mad at them and keep your eye off the controller. You know, it's whoever the controller is. People who sell out, you can follow them till you, you run dead. There's plenty of them, there's no one to sell out. Um, and look at, look at them, look at the money. The money's fake. It's printed out of illusion. Well, a child started about having somebody else's gold. It wasn't even his. And from then on, it's just been illusion. It's just been smoke and mirrors. And in 2008, the money falls. They say, oh, the Monopoly game's so rotten. We got to start a new game. We need a new basket of money, you know? Oh, so it was just a game. Okay, so the money's not real. You printed it out of nothing. That's called counterfeiting. Okay, so if there is no real money to begin with, with no gold to back it and no silver to back it, I guess that means there's no debt either. I guess we don't owe you a damn thing. You know, but nobody's thinking a lot lately. Everybody likes to stay in the chain. That was the last point that I wanted to cover here, if I could. And it was... It was yes. Go ahead. Any questions? Go ahead. Okay, our uh, first question, Rod asks, so who do we trust what you use now? Um, I believe that you should trust yourself and make your own because that's what I started doing like when I realized that Jones was controlling us there. I kind of flipped out and I was getting in trouble for a few days. And there were some people on the site that were from his last, he had a social network before. Did he? Uh, born from Planet Social Work. And uh, this was 12160. And these people came on because they saw that I was really giving them a hard time and they brought me over there and they asked me why I was having such a hard time. They were giving him such a hard time. And when I explained it to them, they were like, okay, well, you know, he kind of screwed us too in the sense that we put all of our work and effort into something and then he just pulled the plug on it with no reason or excuse and left us hanging there. But we're in this for the truth and we still want to do the right thing. And they were like, why don't you come over here and just do your energies, and I was already feeling like I think I'd already written my first blog about the vaccinations because I just come to the point where I said, if you don't like what anybody else is doing or how they're doing it, you might as well do it yourself. I mean, I've done, I've followed Horowitz's information and shown to myself, proven to myself and everybody else, the pharmacies, no the have done it, you know, and, and the UN and Dr. Robertson, they had done it. They had released everything on it, so I didn't need anybody to prove anything to me anymore, and I write out the article and I just decide, yeah, like, we should all become our own journalists. Everybody should uh, look into what they want to find out about. You've got this wonderful free college slash university in front of you called the internet, where you can just look up anything from doctor to insane idiots, published studies, books written. You can get everything under the sun on the subject and thoroughly teach yourself, probably better than in university where you say, well, no, you just read these three books and listen to me. No, then you can run the gamut and get the full scope of things and find out what's really going on. And then you can turn around um, the way you express yourself and the way you do things is going to be the best thing in the world because there's other people that think just like you. Maybe they're having a problem expressing themselves or putting it out. And they're feeling alone, like I'm the only one who feels this way. And when you put your message out, or you put your research out across your way, you're going to connect with those people and help them, and they're going to appreciate it and grow with you. And you're going to grow too. You're going to start understanding things. But I mean, the, the media that you see out there now, you can't trust them as far as you can throw them. These people are insane. They're, they're, they're sick. They're twisted. I don't know how they sleep at night. I'm not going to waste too much of my energy on them, though. I just figure the best way to expose them is for all of us to become our own journalists and expose the stuff ourselves that we need to do. All right, we'll take another text question. What does Brian think of the OTO order temporary orientus? Aaron asks. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, you get into a lot of research. And you come across these names, and for some of them, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is this one that 
Is this the one where they beat themselves, or is that Opus Day, or is the OTO the Templi Orientus the one that had to do with uh, Alistair Crowley? I, I think I'm going to get remind you. Mr. Crowley. Crowley. Okay. Well, uh, just look at the music around you. Just look at the music around you. Do what you want. Nobody can judge you right from the cocky. It's the most disgusting stuff I've ever heard. I'm on the club girl, you know. Uh, you know that you own your own car, so wine on it. You know that you own your own house, so wine on it. Nobody can judge you. Uh, look at them walking around with dead heads and lying with dead bodies, and and every video has somebody possessed and flipping out. Uh, Marilyn Manson is far from alone now. I don't listen to any of this crap anymore because uh, I told like I met Esoteric Kitten probably two years ago and my father was bringing all this stuff to me and I didn't have the room for all of this stuff. And I bumped into Esoteric Kitten on Facebook and she's hitting it out of the park. She's spawning everything left and right. The MK Ultra, the Monarch Mind Programming, um, all the different aspects like uh, the kitten pattern, kitten sex pattern, things like this, all the people wearing different wigs. The rituals, seeing that the videos are out and out and rituals that are taking people by the hand and bringing them through it. And then when their lives fall apart later, they're wondering, what the hell happened to me? Uh, I don't know, maybe because, you know, you like that Katy Perry song too much and stuck with your sister. I don't know. Uh, you know, you ask yourself that. But he said, he said if you became a master of his book, the book of the law, that you would become a master musician. Not a master scientist. Not a master manipulator, not a master musician. No, no, he said you become a master musician. You know, all these people are witches today. All of these people are first to sell out. If not, you're killed. If you, even if you take it and you don't perform properly, they'll ritualistically kill you, pull the spirit out of you, and stick it in there, and it pops up about a month later with the same voice. You know? Look what I believe happened to Whitney Houston. Exactly. And then, I mean, if you listen, uh, if you're listening to Rihanna and you're listening to um, Beyonce, and they've both gone through rituals in all of their videos, and then sometimes you're listening to the radio and you could swear it's Rihanna, and they go, no, it's Beyonce. And then you hear another song and you swear it's Beyonce, you go, no, it's Rihanna. And then the other day I heard a Rihanna song and they told me, no, that's Katy Perry. I'm like, oh, Jesus, man, the two the spirits just jumping from one to the other, just a bunch of big open doors, no brains, you know, legs flying everywhere. They all sound the same anyways. <laughs> well, me, but, like, what I can't figure out is how people listen to this stuff because there's such a lack of imagination. They're all saying the same thing. We've got just repetitive. I mean, you've got kids lately saying, I don't want to listen to the songs because three of them in the world said we're all going to die tomorrow. I feel like something's going on here. Yeah. And you're looking at the kid like, yeah, you're right, kid, there is something going on here. Yeah, we've got another question for you. What is the purpose of an Alex Jones? And he has a lot of guests all day in on this deception. Yes, um, the purpose of Alex Jones is to identify for them. And the whole thing is jokey for me because, I mean, this is the internet. This is there if they put it up. They've been reading it since day one. They can do what they want. They've always done what they want. I'm not up to any evil. I'm not causing a genocide. I'm not killing it. So you know what? I got nothing to hide. But I recognize what Alex Jones and Alex Jones was sent to a place William Cooper, basically. They both came out of the gate around uh, the time of the David Koresh thing. Because William was very upset about that and headed off down there. And as far as following Alex, I saw that that's where Alex got his foot start. Because at the same time that William was there, William had also started his radio show on the internet, and he was already starting to expose Babylon. That was his first thing to do, was Bab the Mystery Babylon series. And that was getting to what's really behind the governments and what's really going on here, and, and the false aliens and all of this stuff, which are really fallen angels. And he was really starting to get to the meat of the matter. So they needed, the Jesuits needed, you know, one of their little rap boys at the university to come out and start building himself up. So basically, Alex is like a bug light that's sent out to collect troopers so he can frustrate them, misdirect them, get them their emotions going. I mean, while I was spending my time with him for the two and a half years, 
I can attest to the fact that it was physically draining. I mean, he, to, he, he knows how to provoke emotionally with his words and his expressions. If you allow yourself, and if you're still in that game of giving to the enemy negative feelings, if you haven't figured that out yet, you understand? And he can play on these things and, and bring you through and make you feel like you're doing something, but he's taking all of the credit for it, you know? And uh, since William Cooper was killed, he was successful for a while. But I mean, there were bound to be people who would come up sooner or later and figure it out. Because this is a, this is all about what you take. It all started for me when you heard the, the man in Montreal, Montreal here talking about Satan having a meeting in the 1700s because he was sitting there reading in the book of Daniel and saw that at the end of days, many would rove about and search about and the true knowledge would become known. And so Satan knew that he had to, he knew there was going to be a waking up and he had to try and either prevent this or direct it in his favor. And so that's how all of these, the Jesuits and all the secret societies have proceeded out since then has been this very purpose, you understand? To make sure that we woke up according to their way. But Jehovah and Jesus have this wonderful way of, no, it doesn't go Satan's way, it never goes Satan's way. And Jones was effective for a while, but from my reflection, even 9-11 itself, the job, the 9-11 job failed for them. But we have too many people looking at it like, no, your story doesn't make sense, there's something wrong, and for me, and lots of people, from that day on, we were not trusting, and we were watching, and, and, and it just kept falling apart at, at them, but slowly, progressively, so that as each year passed, and I watched it from 2006 till now, now it's rapidly deteriorating on them, it's really not going their way at all. And you take Charles Jones, it was not going to work forever. This guy, Matt Vice, all he does is take ideas from people and run with them. So he's not going to last very long at all. You know, he entitled his book Illuminati, whatever. Uh, if you were that honest, you would admit there is no Illuminati, it's the Jesuits. But you didn't do that, did you? You know, you just keep showing and then you throw yourselves on shows where you'll talk some of the conspiracy stuff, to make yourself sound a little crazy, and you'll allow people to down you and diss you so that it just disheartens anybody who's watching. Well, and I've also seen them like turn on other truthers, both him and Alex. Hey, if you are in this for the truth, what are you doing turning on other truthers? You know? Are you going to kill them? Are you going to kill Alex? Yeah. No. You know, they would never kill Alex Jones. He's much too useful for them. I mean, he's a very good externalizer. He's a very good uh, coagitator. He's a very good salesman. He's told himself he cannot afford to put his life on the line for his six million dollar studio when I can afford to put my life on the line and I'm a piece of dirt worm that nobody wants to talk to because I'm a freak and then not because I believe in these things. And hey, you know, William Cooper put his life on the line. Uh, there's plenty of people that have, Phil Schneider put his life on the line. There's plenty of people that have proven, you know, I follow the dead men. And I follow the theory that if you shut me down, if you take me down, I don't mind as long as a thousand ways in my place and follow exactly what I was doing, you're never going to win. You understand? And I'm not looking around for the other 999 million cookers. I know they're all about hundreds of thousands of them. It's just on InfoWars today. Are they all uh, in our two? Well, while I was there on InfoWars, I see that they're very intricate with the CIA and the NSA and NORAD because um, I got involved with a guy named Spanky Marine who was back from Iraq. He called himself Spanky Marine for your freedom. So I called him Spanky Marine. And uh, he would engage the people. We had the uh, Air Force chart that was saying how they would either try and talk you back into the fold of things or if you were a troll just monitor them and leave them out and stuff like that, you know. And I was very good at spotting these people and shutting them down because I would tell the people I'm in for words, if you spot that it's a troll that's getting paid, you know, he's from the military, well, help them get paid to listen to you. If you know it's them, ignore them. I said, look, I'm pretty sure they're just like telemarketers. They're paid like telemarketers. they got to get something from you. So if they try talking to you, you just ignore them. 
After about 15 minutes, their own boss is going to come and tap them on the shoulder and say, uh, go talk with somebody else, this thing's not working. And it, I know it worked because they hit me with so many viruses and my computer would just crash in front of me and sometimes my, my children were here and they would see it, you know, and be like, wow, dad, you know, I said, yeah, well, that's what happens, you know. But I came back on and I told them that um, there was, at that time when I was doing the site, when people would make a comment, there was a little ticker running on the far bottom right corner where you would see what the last few people had said, okay? And I had just made a comment on one story, and I'm coming back to the main page to see what people are talking about. And I see some two people getting mad at me on another story, and I have been on that story, but I didn't say anything to upset them. So I say, let me go check out this story. And I go on the story, and I see their two insult, anger statements at me, and I go down to whatever my statement is, and when I start reading it, from the minute I read it, I see it's not me. I'm not the one who wrote this. Somebody is posing as me, and they're talking crap. So I came on, one of the girls was Feather, and I said, Hey Feather, there's somebody on this site, and they're imitating me. But I'll tell you what, there's something they don't know. And I start typing in French. Where's that Francais? Puis je suis sûr que le tiré si c'est pas le Francais, lui. And all the other people on our phone the site were accustomed to watching that too. So they all start coming over to the site to see that I've caught this guy, because he can't speak French, and I can and he just disappeared, you know? And I said, Spank me, Marie, you'll have to go and ask the boss for some funds, you know, from Delta or Morad, and buy yourself a Frenchman to come play with me. So sure enough, guys, two weeks later, I'm on it, and buy yourself a Frenchman to come play with me. So sure enough, guys, two weeks later, I'm on Info Wars, and Spanky Marine comes up, and I go, hey, Spanky Marine, how's it going? Goes, oh, la nuit, mon petit ami de Quebec. And I'm like, well, that's a compliment, man. That means you got the funding. You got the money, and they got you a Frenchman to come play with me. Well, this also shows me that the CIA and Morad, they're right there at the Infowars site reading me. And everything you say, and everything you do, just like anywhere else. That's why I don't even let it bother me. I'm not up to you, but I'm on Facebook because I believe that the CIA, a man from the CIA, retired from the CIA and took his money and started Facebook. And that's the truth of it, not this stupid movie, okay? Because that's what we found out in 2007 when we all got on. It's the CIA that started it. So I decided, you know what? It's their face. Let me go out and take what they do and come here to their face and smear it all over their face and show people what they are doing and get all those people to face what up until now they refuse to face. That's what Facebook is for. So are you on the hit list? Um, I sure hope I am. I'll tell you the truth, it would be an honor. Because uh, what, what, what do I have to worry about? They can be like Alex Jones who was freaking people out one day about a Palestinian doctor in Dallas who had sent money to the Palestinian children and he was claiming that the Israeli Mossad had come over here, snuck through American customs come to Dallas, had killed the Palestinian man, pulled out his stomach, put it in a garbage bag, and put it back in his stomach. And that the mortician in Dallas was a Muslim, and he was freaking out, oh, you shouldn't do this. But I've been telling him for years, come, come pull a similar stunt, you know? Shoot me in the back like William, or hang me with rope like Phil Schneider, hang me like you did Deborah in, in, the, in the, the shed, you know? Do whatever you want. Keep me in the back of for eight hours like Whitney Houston. Chop me into little pieces. Take a dump down my throat. Give it your best shot. Okay? Because when my father and my king are through with you, as long as they get a little smile on their face when they think of me, I pop right back up like Jesus. I have nothing to worry about. But still, now and then, I sure wouldn't want to be those people. I think they're the ones that got something to worry about. Do you know your, your Facebook being attacked? Your page? All the time. The, well, last night, last night when I was putting up all the Kennedy stuff, they had it flashing continuously ah, at one point so that I couldn't put my comments on your page, I couldn't put comments on my page. So I just pulled the plug, because that's an old trick, you just pull the plug right over the wall and crash your computer, and it crashes whoever's doing this to you. And me, I'm back up within a minute. I'm back up within a minute. And then this morning when I was posting 
some spam memories that we were using and Apple mobile device because I always have my Windows Pack Manager open. I see they were using an Apple mobile device to try and block me every time I was going to post something. So I just went into the Apple mobile device files there and I deleted a couple of them and corrupted them. So now they can't use it. So I, you know, after tonight when I go back, maybe they'll try some other stuff. So you just pull out the plug? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I know about Not the power plug, the plug, right? The power plug. The power plug. I just crash the computer like that. That way, if they're, because of the advantage to that too is that if they're downloading anything to you, it's not safe. You know, because my son had his computer open a year and a half ago downstairs in the basement, and I was here and I made a comment about Obama being a clone file. And my computer here just shuts down. But I, 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 well, then so I see what's happened for me, I pull the plug, you understand? I put it back in, I boot myself up, and I said, let me go see my son's computer downstairs. I went downstairs, my son's computer had a virus. So I found the virus, and the, fi the virus was called Farrell, and the dot file was called Obama. Wow. So yeah, you know, it's a good part, you know, come on, you know, whatever, children, give it your best, you know. You people are, because uh, they're accustomed to dealing with somebody who's intimidated, who's afraid. Uh, they don't realize, like, I, I took their death announcements, their pronouncements. I took the death. Like, I'm dead. It's cool. I'm just not one of these corpses that's going to sit around waiting for it. You've never met an uncomfortable corpse like me. This is not going to be weekend of burners for you. Okay? This is going to be your worst friggin' nightmare until I am officially dead. And that's then so I have no fear. I could give a rat but they can do what they want. A year and a half ago, when they were trying to start the Syrian thing, I got an email that showed a bunch of shit Syrians holding up signs that said, come blow us up, we're stupid idiots, and then and the email was saying that it was a CIA man who had done this because us over here we're never intelligent enough to ask ourselves that if most of these people didn't even go to school in their country, how could they write a, a sign in English saying, do not do this, do not do that? Where, where did they get the language from? And the CIA can't was admitting, we do it. But this guy was so sick of how stupid we've been, he wanted to play a trick on us. So he posted this picture. And I just posted that on Facebook. It was 11.30 in the morning. I come out of my apartment at 12 o'clock in the morning to smoke a cigarette, and somebody's written on the back of my van, Long Live Syria. They didn't even write Syria properly, which is what the email said. And most of these Muslims can't even write the name of their own country, let alone write English. So this person did it on purpose to write Long Live Syria in the corner and stayed across my back window, die, pig, die. And that's what's going to happen now. So that showed me somebody's right around my house here, reading me. And I told them, come back, come and see what I wrote as a message back to you, if you think I'm afraid of you. I'm not afraid of any of these people, man. You're going to your best, me. Eh? I've been in these people. I've given any men in black or whatever come after you, like you see cars like near your house or anything. Yeah, there's got three nations in front of me, or around me, or Knights of Columbus with their ring, fat ring hanging out on the side of the door on their finger, the Freemasonry on the back of the driver's license when they're in front of me when I'm leaving places. I get two old Knights of Columbus that pass by my house every morning and afternoon, and I get Muslims that pass my house once a day. And I just sit around, and I don't say anything to them, I just watch them, because this has been going on since I moved here. Since I moved here, because I, when I started treating, I wasn't living here. I was living in another section of Montreal. Oh. I've only been here for two and a half years. Right. And from the, min the minute I got here, I've been monitored. Yeah. Uh, yes. You're on the group that I cre that we created called the Conspiracy Talk. Do you mind ever posting up some of this uh, Columbus, uh, what do you call them, Columbus Knights? Because I've been here for a yet. Yeah, and that's why I posted the stuff on my Facebook page. I posted their oath, and I posted, there's a couple of YouTube videos on their oath, too, and what they do. But I know that here in Canada, you have to be a Knight of Columbus to run for office. So, like, you could call Jean Charest on the door, and you can call Pauline, Pauline Madara PQ, and you can call Francois Le if you want. 
Dollar to make your t-shirt, Prexian, Piper, you name it. it. No, it doesn't change. They don't work for us. They took a pledge to somebody else first. We all sit down to the same thousand dollar meals and decide that we're all worthless and we should just shut up and accept what they're doing. They've been spraying us like cockroaches for the last 30 years, if not more, and they don't give two shits about it, you know? All right, we'll take a text question. What cause do we have against them to know who we are? I am not the straw man, Susie X asks. Your power is within you, and one of the biggest powers is to take the power for yourself, but it sounds like taking responsibility for yourself. You have to take responsibility for the fact. I took it. I didn't sit there like, like most people were. If anybody said, well, Dan, you're picking on this, you're picking on... I picked on everything I was, I am, I like, I believed in, everything. I picked on me first. I found out everything, everything was false and fake. I didn't have a problem with it. I wasn't surprised. You understand? That's how you deal with problems, not by continuing to run from them. You can phone at the Jesuits, the Illuminati, all these other people. But you sat there and you could have done something about this and stood up for yourself. Okay? But this lie that there's nothing that you can do and you can't make a difference? Believe me, I believe Robert, believe me, I believe a lot of us. We've been through way too much to ever believe that lie anymore. Okay? We post one thing and we say one thing and all of a sudden they're contacting us, they're letting us know, their jaws are dropping. And we're like, okay, okay, this, this was the same person that would have told me a day ago and nobody on my thing like that. Okay, thanks, you know. Uh, okay, we've got another question for you. Uh, next question. Uh, asks, so do they really want to reduce world population by 80 to 95 percent? Well, of course, you have to understand that these psychopaths claim that they're the managers of this planet. And they've managed it into the ground and into the dirt. And what are they telling you? that they're still the most qualified and perfect managers in the world. It's just that uh, the company's gotten too big and they've got a downsize. But listen, you know, pallets aren't that expensive. Forklifts aren't that expensive. The buildings and boats and ships, they're not. It's these pesky little tools we have to use called humans. we got to feed them, we got to clothe them, we got to put up with their complaining. And not one of them is the same. You know, it's not like all the pilots are the same and all the footmen, all these people are so we're gonna start by by downloading the, the company, we're gonna start by downsizing the company by getting rid of all of the humans. Like useless okay. This is basically what they're saying to you. Okay, but they don't have a piece of paper from Jehovah and Jesus saying that they're anybody better than you and that they're anybody greater than you. So up until now it was all of us that are permitting this to go on by actively participating along with them. They have no authority. None of the politicians have authority. None of the police have authority. None of the judges have the authority. None of them. Okay? Because they don't even represent themselves properly. They've served themselves out. But they sure don't represent us. And I know that they have no authority. They have no piece of paper. They have no proof that they run between us and God. All they ever are and will be is equal. And the day we get that to our heads, the same as realizing that you're more powerful than the money. You're worth more than the money. You're worth more than a shiny piece of rock called gold or silver. You are the worth. Until you get that through your heads, people are going to continue to take advantage of you, enslave you, and slaughter you. That will not change. And the only thing you can change is yourself, and that's by disassociating with finding ways to stick the stick in the wheel, finding a way to look opposite. If you happen to notice that everybody is walking around saying, everyone's backwards, the world's backwards, medicine's backwards, doctor's backwards, church's backwards, yeah. you know, backwards, backwards. Okay, we're letting Luciferians and Satanists practitioners of, of doing everything backwards, walking backwards, talking backwards, listening to music backwards. And they get called and become masters when they get the rest of us to do the same damn thing without realizing it. So think of that when you're walking around saying everything is backwards. We're living backwards. They fooled us into it. So the only way to get out of it is to start thinking opposite. Start thinking of third ways, fourth ways, fifth ways, new ways, but honest ways, real ways. You know, uh, how can you say, um, People that are very, um, they only, they only can 
concerned with themselves, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm very selfish. The, the exact opposite. Make all of your actions the complete opposite of selfish. Very all-encompassing and outwardly. You have to outthink these people. We'll take another question. Was the new learning a hoax? Aaron asks, in your opinion, and information. Yes, and um, I've got a picture of the cat running across the sound stage, and it's hilarious. I've seen the video of the, of the lighting picture and the guy in the shorts backing into the shot. What you have to understand is that um, the original alien hoax goes back to Babel, the Tower of Babel in Nimrod. That was when Satan first used the lie that, you know, aliens came down and made us. And that place was broken up and all of the information was spread off across the world. So that's why we've got stories of aliens in Australia and we've got stories of aliens in South America, North America, and China, and Japan, and anywhere you go, there's stories of aliens. But now, they knew that they wanted to do this lie again here at the end and say that the, the fallen angels were really um, aliens that came down and made us through DNA manipulation. But for us to believe that something is going to be living out there, they have, to believe, they have to get us to believe that we can actually go out there first. And they knew this. So they, they hired them. Um, I'm sure I'm not remembering his name right now, the director that uh, did Clockwork or Stanley Kubrick. They hired Kubrick to do it in the sound studio. And as they said to you, all of us, that the insiders are allowed to come out with the inside information as long as they make it fiction. So they did make it fiction for us with the famous O.J. Simpson in the 1979 movie called Capricorn Run, where the three the astronauts are in the jet about to take off and all of a sudden the Secret Service rushes in and grabs them and takes them to a secret location out in the desert where they're told we can't really afford the mission so we have to soundstage this whole thing. So they did externalize it to you in 79 and show you what they had to do. Once they had people convinced that we could actually go out and pass the Van Allen boat without being destroyed, okay, now they could convince you that other aliens could come in and were watching us. Uh, William Cooper spoke of the pictures he saw of, of the pyramid on the moon and the face on Mars in 1971, the year I was born. So I don't give one monkey but what Martin Dice says about William Cooper. William Cooper said he saw those the year I was born and was told you will see these come out in the future. And they killed him in 2001, and I saw the pictures in 2005 and six. So I call that accuracy, deadly accuracy, for somebody that was supposed to be a drunk, lost liar. Very interesting. What about oh. gray circles, crop circles? What do you make of that? Who do you think made crop circles? Who's making crop circles? Well, if you watch, there's a video that talks about spirit being these bars of light. And their example is over in India where a bunch of people, they're taking the picture at night, and there's a bunch of people on the ground meditating. But it says at the bottom of the picture, because their hands are beside them with their fingers clasped together, and they're saying that right now they're meditating with no focus. And you see maybe one, two little balls of light in the air and pitch black in the night. And then the swami or whatever tells them all to throw up their hands and start making this noise, they're all now doing it in focus. And they take a picture again. And you, all you see are bars of light everywhere. Everywhere. Literally in the sky like it's snowing. These are, these are demons. These are fallen angels. Okay? And what are they doing? They're misleading people. They're impressing people with pictures and geometry and shapes and little messages. It, it doesn't impress me too much at all. I'm not impressed by it because all I see it doing is fooling people into believing uh, that, there, that there are aliens out there and life on other planets, and then, and then, and Yeah, we'll say there's life in the other, you know, on other planets out in space, but if two cells drop in the woman's uh, ovum, we don't call that life yet. No, we're not. Yeah, there's, one, that. there's one um, crop circle that has an alien face and he's holding up a tablet and says, don't trust would uh, deceive you. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I'm sure you have. I forget what it's called. There's like DNA on it. And yeah. 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 
and then they would convince themselves it's because I can get up tomorrow morning and do some good, but you never quite get to that, do you? You just never quite get to that, do you, you silly little children? No, all you do is run in fear from shadows and tell lies and make up new stories with old turds repackaged, you know, as a fresh new turd. No, it's, it's just not working anymore. The Bible has been, the prophecies have been fulfilled, but the veil has been lifted here at the end, and we're seeing who's really controlling everything. And who everybody goes to to kiss butt, to get the money, to get the fame, to get the soapbox to stand on. That's why I was telling Robert and Mario, I prefer videos that have little mistakes in them. I prefer articles that have words misspelled in them. You know? I like a little screw up here and there. It shows me a human giving effort. Is anything I see, anytime I see a nice shoot, suit, nice presentation, polished video, shiny this, cut that, money behind it, I always find out within a few minutes from my father and king. It's just another setup. It's just another liar. And all of these things, all you have to do is listen to them. Where is Blavatsky? Well, the most Steve Jobs, the, the Buddhist follower. Come on, they're all supposed to attain uh, godhood. They're all supposed to attain immortality. What happened to that? Where are they? I I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just nuts. Eh? Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just not nuts. Eh? Ah, oh, it makes a lot of sense, sense bro, you know, everything you said so far makes a lot of sense to me, you know. Thank I'm you. sure a lot of people out there, they, 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 they're saying you're interesting and they say you're on to something, so. Well, I was happy and grateful to talk with you guys tonight and get this out. And let me know if I can come on any other time, all right? Welcome back. And you guys have it. You guys have a good show. Let me know if I can post this on the face because I know a lot of people might not have been able to attend or whatnot, but they like yeah, to Yeah, well, the show, well, after the show is over, which is around 10 o'clock, uh, maybe 15 minutes later, the recording is available. And then you can post it. You probably get it. If you follow me, or just call a host, you, 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 and you're participating, you're going to get a, a thing that says that you were uh, available, that, that you uh, participated, and you're going to record it, and it's certainly you can post it on, you know, Facebook or whatever you want. Then we will post it. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the, the group we have uh, called the, the Conspiracy Talk Group, we'll put it on there too. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, guys. Nice. So thanks a lot. Have a nice night, and I'll talk to you guys later. Yes, thank you. Hi, Bye. 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 Boy, that, that was very interesting. I, I, you know, it's like, wow. It was like as if I was on Coast to Coast tonight, you know? Coast like, uh, that's like a guess you have on Coast to Coast. Who we'll agrees on that? Yeah. Well, he came to me and uh, actually wanted to, to appear on the show and tell me, but there's a lot of stuff that we didn't cover tonight. I guess he didn't have time because we, we could cover so much stuff with this information that he had. This, this information, not this information, the information presented. That we could have had a whole show just on uh, Alex Cooper 